Hello, hello everyone and welcome to our Arizona homestead. In our last video, we harvested four nice sized tilapia. And in this episode, we're going to take you from tank to table because we're going to prepare those. So come along with us today as we clean and cook our catch. Okay, I am going to be using a method I saw on bluegrass aquaponics and uh, I'm going to fillet this fish without getting into the guts. It's going to be a first time for me. Normally I do de-gut the fish first, get all the guts out and then go from there like most people. But I saw this method and I want to give it a try. So if you want to see how the professionals do it or someone who's much more skilled than I, please check out Bluegrass Aquaponics. But as you saw, I made that cut right under the uh, fin there at a diagonal cut there. And now I'm running my knife along the bones right there. I actually can feel the uh, skeleton of the fish. But as you see, I'm cutting a little bit off. I should stay closer to the fin. But uh, like I said, first time out, and I am excited about not having to gut this fish. Okay, so now we're getting into the tail area. Now I need to actually cut through. I'm trying to see how I can do this and let you guys see it. But I'm going to cut right through the tail area right here and take off the tail on this one side. As you can see, the tail fin. The tail fin is now off. So now I'm going in once again, getting, getting in there. You now these gloves. Ugh. I'm getting in there and I am moving the knife blade along the bones of the skeleton of the fish. Very gently, very slowly, just kind of going a little bit at a time, just taking my time and trying to feel where those bones are and getting that knife in there and getting it as close as I can because you don't want to lose any of that delicious meat. So I'm getting close to the area where there's going to be some pin bones coming up. And these pin bones, they're not very difficult to cut through. So we're going to cut through the pin bones coming up here in a minute. And once we get through those, we're just going to continue on down the fish. I believe I'm getting there right about now. I'm Yes, I'm starting to hit the pin bones about now. So you see I've turned the blade a little bit to, to see if that would help kind of get those cut out a little bit. But see my mistake there? I actually have cut into the, the body right there, the body cavity. So I need to be careful. And I noticed that I've cut into the cavity and I don't want to spill out that. So I'm going to be very careful. And I see that I need to get back onto the bones again. Um, this one is not going to be the best, let me tell you. Please check out Bluegrass Aquaponics. I'll leave a link so you can see how those two ladies did it because they were on point. Now you can see very well that I've actually cut into the body right there. I haven't hit any of the guts or anything, but I need to get back onto the, uh, the skeleton there. So that's what I'm doing. I'm getting back onto the rib cage there and just going down. There we go, getting that cut free. Now that I'm getting all of that cut free, as you can see, I, I lost a little meat there. But I think this is great. If I can get this down, this would be awesome. No guts, please. I'm loving this. I think I would like to try this on catfish as well because uh, this is an awesome way to uh, fillet a fish uh, without having to get into the guts. Okay, I'm almost at the bottom now. And as I get close to the end here, we're just going to be slicing it off. See, I started slicing a little bit. I apologize that I'm getting out of the camera frame a little bit there. And this last slice is actually out of the camera frame, but I'm, I'm still going along the, the rib cage there all the way to the bottom. And then I just slice the filet off and I am like, whoa, okay, that's nice. No guts. I love it. Okay. Do you see that? No guts. I'm loving this process. Let's get to the other side.
Not as beautiful as their filet, but for the first time around, not bad. I did get a little bit of silver skin. I'll just scrape that off. Okay, now let's watch my hubby. He is much better at this than I am. This is his first time around as well. And I am off to the side, uh, kind of telling him what I saw on the video and how they did it. So he's kind of following my directions from what I saw on the bluegrass aquaponics video. Oh, he cut a little bit into the flesh there, but hey, first time, he's doing great. That was the most perfect one. First one for last. First of all, we rinsed the fish in just regular clear water, but they have been soaking now in vinegar water. And that's what we like to do for our fish as well as our chicken. It helps pull the blood out of the meat and uh, kind of cleanse the meat. So we do that with our chicken and with our fish. So now we're getting ready to get to the cooking part. Now I'm gonna give them a quick pat dry here, uh, preferably paper towels, but I was out, so napkins work just as well. This recipe calls for buttermilk. I do not have buttermilk. I'm just going to add one tablespoon of vinegar to regular milk. This is 2% milk, whatever kind of milk you use, but one tablespoon to one cup of milk and let that sit for 10 minutes and you will have buttermilk for your recipe. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to turn to buttermilk, we are going to season our flour. I just dump a whole bunch of flour onto a plate. I never measure it, I just dump it on. And we're gonna add our seasonings. This is a critical part for me. I think this is where you get your most flavor in your fish, is if you're using this flour, or if you season the fish directly. I personally prefer to season my flour. And we're gonna add one last ingredient, my fave, lemon pepper, y'all. You got to have that lemon pepper when you're doing your seafood. That's just me, I love lemon pepper. I'm just gonna let you know right now, lemon pepper freak. Okay, I've moved to the other counter in hopes of getting this all in the picture. I have one egg, add our buttermilk, which is ready. All right, step one, into the flour. And next we're going to go into the egg wash. I'm trying to keep that wet hand, dry hand situation under control. Next, we go into our coating. A lot of people can use panko. I try to keep some things a little lower carb, so these are pork rinds. A lot of people use a lot of different things. I have even heard that crushed corn flakes are now being sold as a coating. Hmm, that might be good. Well, here we go, into the frying pan. I love using my cast iron chicken frying pan. It is deep, it has uh, tall sides, and it's fantastic for frying chicken and fish. I like to scoop out some of those extra bits of coating that are floating in the oil and keep the oil as clean as possible. All 
All right, that's our first fillet out. Oh, but take a look. Ooh, we got a temperature issue. We're trying to fry it about 350. So what I usually do if that's an issue is put another fillet in. Another fillet will bring down the temperature of the oil so you will not be burning your fish. As you can see, brought us down to 324. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Oh. Well, I apologize. I don't have a beautiful picture of these fillets on a plate. Well, because as quick as I could get them fried and cooled, they were consumed. They were so delicious, y'all. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I just wanna say thank you to all of you for watching this video. And if you like this content, please give us a thumbs up and help our channel grow by sharing it with like-minded folks. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it already. As always, my friends, be happy, be well, and be blessed. Until next time, bye-bye.